what, what do you remember uh, your parents telling you about you know, their organs and where they come from, places they well, are? Well, my daddy come from a pretty wealthy family. He had uh, three brothers, which he had a twin. And some of the places I missed way back in the story when I started about mom and dad moving back from Madison. He was a police officer. For the and one night, him and the guy that was hit him, they was transferring to another state, city, town, and they had to keep him overnight. And, you know, they had to guard for him. And they had to anybody. But he bribed them, and they needed money for that. He gave them money for it. I don't think he was a murderer. I think he was a... Yeah, he robbed the, robbed the bank. Well, of course, you didn't do things like that. Police didn't get by with it. So he was... There he lost his job and that, so he went back to farming, which that's all he, he always farmed all his life. And we always, you know, we raised maize in Arkansas for money. We raised tobacco to just enough for his own use, but, but we raised every bite we had to eat in growing up. You had nothing. You go to the store when your all your meat is gone in the spring and have to buy short meat, you know, we don't do like that. We called it wine, you know. But, you had to uh, you had to raise everything and you put it away for winter. You didn't you didn't have it. You had refrigerators up in the winter. No. You like in the summertime you'd think, I wonder how we'd have good milk and butter. But mom always would have a spring, no way. She kept water in her tub and she kept her milk sitting in and her butter sitting in. Now there's difference in lots of families back there. And other families hear this story, they think, Oh, that ain't the way we do it. But they they clabbered their milk and kept it in the house and they emptied one jar and put the milk back in that jar. Mama was in particular, they had to be scalded and empty because if you don't, your milk sours up and clabbered. But we churned every other day. Those kids hated that job. Churning butter. We sat with this four gallon churn and it takes you a good hour. Sometimes you put a little warm water in it if it's too cold, it'll get churned quicker. But we took turns and just, uh, we, I hate everything that you do. I don't like I guess maybe I didn't then, I didn't know it because it wouldn't have done any good. And if you had, the, the worst part of back Arkansas was you had flies. Now I think they're sprayed with planes and stuff. I don't think you have them. But we had to keep screen doors and boy, you could come in now a couple of times. In fact, it's still that way. Because when we go back to Lisbeth, she didn't have a fly, but when we went in and out the door, I bet you noticed that. You mm -hmm. was back there. And that worries you to death. Right? Lisbeth go around killing them with the mm -hmm. Paul and I couldn't stand to do that. We had to run them outside, and that's... You no, know, I wouldn't live back there again because they do that. But outside of that, it's the most beautiful place in the world to live. Well, the place is now your parents are from. You say they, Georgia, and, Georgia and, and Alabama yeah. now. You know what counties or cities specifically? No, I I will get that next time I talk okay. to Elizabeth because she took Humboldt County. Now well, that's Humboldt County in, in Alabama. It would be interesting to know what time our ancestors came across well, from I'd Europe. like to study. Yeah. I'd like to think of what, now as I said, I figured that my grandpa, he died, at, he was 104 when he died. Mount Paul was just a year old. So he, he'd been a hundred and fifty-five. A hundred and fifty-six now, because Mount Paul is fifty-five. He'd been a hundred and fifty-six. So we figured, yeah, I think he's in World War Twelve. Wasn't it? Nineteen twelve, yeah. Nineteen twelve. I, I believe Lena figured out one time that he must have been in that war because he got wounded. He come home, he's got a head of sharp look, laid sharp. Now, Dad there was in service because now your husband. Didn't. No, my grandpa, oh, my you? father never was in service, but my grandpa was. But no, my grandpa was one that was in the war of 1912. Yeah, my grandpa was in the war, war. and he was. But he, there was always kind of mixed up as far as politics. because he argued that grandpa couldn't have been in the same hill with uh, Bonaparte. But he used to play at Bonaparte's street. But he says he's worked in the Bernard Bernard Park. What was he? A mayor? I mean, a in general? General. Yeah, was he a general? Yeah. You see, I've never read my history of geography. I know a little bit of this. But, but 
and, and they got back then from mama they got all their education a good education i believe that spell have you never heard of that you never mom i see mom said when you went through that three times you graduated a spelling book type? It was. It had everything in it, but they called it the blue back spelling. And I bet you couldn't find one nowhere. Um, I'll ask Elizabeth if she thinks there's a chance of finding one. Mama okay. had one because mm -hmm. she was a great reader. Uh, she read all Dad's law books. She don't know about law, but he did. And history and geography. You know, she was. But her schooling was in that blue book spelling, and she had a better education. Than we get here and we're going to college. You don't have to do it. You see me sitting here. <laughs> and this is why I'm not talking to you. I'm just going to make a noise. There. But yeah. if, if you ever, if you could go with your daddy sometime, he could really show you some questions. He went down there once, and I was too young to appreciate it. I was like 12, and I was 12, and I, she was telling me, you know, this up in this house up here, as I remember playing, and doing. You know, I don't really think I'm going to play that. I would love to do it now. You know, David, you can hardly remember your grandpa. Yeah, I can remember grandpa because I remember coming from Phoenix up here for a week or so. Yeah, you're just going to tell that much. Oh, yeah. I'd be so thrilled because I'd just go so long without seeing you and I couldn't hardly stand it. The day your daddy and mother moved to Phoenix, they stayed out in my house for two or three days and they played piano all day and sung and we played the guitar. Now, I wanted to hear them and I had to keep going outside because I could, I'd cry all day and they didn't know it because I couldn't stand to see them leave. Amber, come here. Yeah. Can you take him with you? No yeah. fights. No. He doesn't know. He doesn't have a lot. Of, you probably have more of your parents than your dad. Do you have, or well, maybe you wouldn't because it's all. Right, right, yeah, but you were talking about Mr. White then. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, you, you, you mean in Mr. White or, or my dad? The wife, all the wives. Right? All the wives? Like my dad, your husband's father, mm -hmm. and his father. Well, he was married before and had the boy, Chester, that... Uh, this is your husband's grandfather. Father. But his grandfather, I don't know anything about him any farther than the, the... Your grandfather. That's as far as I know about the wives, because all I know that his wife died at birth of their first child, and then he married... Uh, he married his wife. And uh, that's Paul, That's your grandmother. And then they had... Uh, Eddie and Jim, we call Eddie the word over, but, and Jim and and Mildred, which is still living, I guess. It, uh, yeah, it Paul's be. sister. She lives, well, she's backwards in parts from Tulsa to, uh, oh, somewhere else. Uh, Mount Paul found her a time or two because he's trying to find her Bible. Paul had a Bible that was over 100 years old. And Eddie had it. Did your husband had a Bible when he was years old? It was supposed to be his. When Miss White died, it was supposed to belong to him. Well, Eddie had it, and he sent a bunch of things out here, but he didn't send them with the Bible. So we can't, we haven't been able to locate that. But he's got all the information on the back that anybody's wrong. And your grandpa was just, he made him promise him he'd get the Bible. But, and everything that they had, all of the kids did it. Should went to Mountain Hall, you know, the Bible and all the things like that. But uh, he had a few things that were real old. But we never seen them. We don't know what Eddie done with them. And you see, Jim is both, both of them dead, and we don't know. Yeah. Paul couldn't find out a thing about the Bible. He was disgusted. It, was a, it had all the information in the back that Mountain Hall would have liked. But there's no nobody in that family left except Mildred, and she don't seem to know. Do you know, so you know when uh, Mr. White married Mrs. White is something? I, I can think in a minute. Guess it. Because of uh, Eddie was Eddie would be now about 85, and they was married about a year ago. And his wife. So it's, it's, it's been about 86 years ago. And how, when did he die? He died, uh, 
Because he would walk eight miles to his house. Yeah, eight or nine miles. He, and I was just worried. I had no way of hearing to see if he got there. But he'd walk up there to stay all night because Mr. White was very fond of him. Now, he, Paul's daddy and mother never was fond of nobody. I mean, that she wasn't devoted to the kids. But um, your daddy's father was like he is. Uh, Mount Paul's awful fond of him, Mr. Rancher. I mean, he pays a lot of attention. And that was very, when I married into that family, but my family was a happy, they played all the time, and they worked all the time, they was happy. But all of uh, Paul's family read and was cranky. They didn't talk to each other at all. So it was really good. You pass, one to say something, the other would kind of grunt or something. And it was horrible. So I went there and, and, and had to live with them while I was married. And I was, it was so miserable to me, I couldn't begin to think of all the things wrong you know, because Paul was young, but Paul wasn't like the rest of them. Now, your grandfather wasn't like Eddie or Jamal, as your daddy could tell you that, uh, but almost anybody else. I've never seen your grandfather work. I can't remember seeing him mad. Or well, he, was, he had an awful quick temper. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I say, um, lately maybe not Paul had, but he used to never have a temper. He did like my dad. But Paul had a very quick temper, but he'd get mad just a minute and that's all, you know. But he was, uh, he loved, worshipped my family because they was all, he was all them. ignorant. I, I don't care if the, that the laces was this. The laces was all ignorant. We never had any education whatsoever. The whites were all what I thought the smartest people in the world. Because I thought, well, Vince, we didn't have any education. We was what kind of education did the whites have? Well, they didn't even have. They didn't have. I didn't think they went to high school, but they did have a grade school education. So they were just naturally. Just and they lived in city all their life, and I thought they were the smartest people in the world. I do. Oh, you don't know how ignorant I was. Raised in the country, married at sixteen, and I moved into a family that was, I thought, was wealthy and was, I thought, they were smart. And I was so ignorant that I was ashamed to talk because I feared I didn't sound right. You know, I was I miserable for the first few years. And yeah. I was it because when you don't have an education, you intimidated by that. So. Now, you, you, maybe you're not. My kids tell me, well, Mama, you wasn't. There's nobody ignorant in the family. There's not, in all of our whites and laces, too, there's not anyone that's mentally unbalanced. Uh, we're, Alice Joy reminded me one day, she said, Mama, did you realize in all of our big family, and all the young folks, all, there's not a, none that's mentally unbalanced, like in families they are. You know. But we were just angry from not having any knowledge with people, yeah. not going to school and stuff, you know, being out in the country, you don't see. So you were in love with the Wyatts being more city. Why would they be in more city? Why? Well, they lived in city. They lived all in, in town, and there was... Uh, They lived like in lived in big towns, Fort Smith is big for us back yeah, there, you know, but they didn't, and we thought living in town, you just had to have, you just had to be smart and wealthy. Yeah. That was how I, other people didn't think it, I was just like, like and we wasn't used to street cars, we'd just go to town Hi, to town. When we, when we wasn't federal, we'd go up there maybe on Saturday sometime, but we didn't, we didn't even know anyone. Because all of our friends is in the country now. But we had wealthy friends. All the Royals and all the people that we associated with were wealthy, but you was either a share couple, you was either the poor ones or the wealthy ones. There's only two classes. I guess it changed, I hope. Yeah. Than what it used to be. Because it was. It was uh, like they talk about feeling sorry for the colored people. Uh, and there wasn't very many there, and they had their own part of town, but they just as well off as we was. And in fact, they didn't have to live on the farm and work. They stayed in the city, you know. For a little 
We worked hard for what we had, and a few you did. But you didn't know any different. You didn't expect to have all these extra things. But, you know, I thought Miss White, she's sitting there filming all kind of new material, and all that stuff, and I thought she was embroidering and everything. And we had no time for that. We were out in the country, and we didn't have anything to do with it. So where, where did Mrs. White and Mr. White come from? Were they born in Arkansas? No, no. They're, uh, they're from Texas. They're from Texas. Yeah. 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 They lived in Arkansas, in Oklahoma mostly. They come from Oklahoma. Yeah, they did. But I don't know where about in Oklahoma, except that, uh, they didn't talk too much about their background. Because they was actually kindly, I guess, ashamed maybe about them. I don't know. But uh, they did, nobody didn't talk much about where they were from. And then it was a moment I had to get the birds. See, I don't know where you see yourself up there, but. But Glenn Allen would love to know everything that even I told you, because we didn't talk to him growing up, and he didn't understand anything. Like the Mountain Pole, all this information he's got about the whites, it enters his Glenn. Because, and Lena said he'll tell you that whatever you, whatever I said, it's in her paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, but she's gonna see it in the family newsletter. I'm going to have your picture and say an interview with Glenn and I'm going to type up I wish I hadn't skipped some of the parts that lived up to me, but uh, the idea that... Uh, what you should do is have Elizabeth on a tape, like just by herself, just beside everything she can remember. That would be a good deal because Elizabeth, mm -hmm. don't forget things, that she would, you know, she's 10 years older than me, so she would not, uh, she's very... Well, I always had an idea. She had been, uh, mm -hmm. never had daughters to teach her new things or something. And she'd been turning children until she stayed home all the time. But she's still very intelligent, and I think. And John and they're both now, he's about 90. And she's, Which they sold their farm. Yeah, but they sold it, but they still live on it because the people, that they, they used to live there. You know, oh, they didn't do the farming? No, that, because they hadn't for a long time because they uh, sold their cows and even the chickens, they don't want nothing. They can't. So Elizabeth has arthritis, and, she, and John has heart trouble. And John's happy to sit there 12 or 14 hours a day and watch television. You know. But Elizabeth is not. But they're too old to do anything else. They're, you know, they're medical. Or even the wives of Lizzie medical doctors. We don't, we don't have any cancer, do we? Or any heart attacks? Not in the back, in the back. Ages, you know, I don't do uh, There never was anything now. My sister died of, I think she was extremely long ago, female for those cancer. That's not been very many years ago. You probably knew it. Yeah, Rosie. Uh, after your uh, mother and father married, I know, for a long time, they then you were well. But in the background, I don't know of anybody that had heart trouble or cancer or diabetes either. Not until, until Lee has got older and Elizabeth mm -hmm. has it, but that's... Uh, and your husband had cancer. No. Yeah, but then it's... That was related to his job. That was related, related to his job because I think the brick does. Okay. I so we don't have any Lee. serious medical problems. Right? No, when we was growing up, all the time, mm -hmm. the only thing that I ever heard of it being bad that we was ever scared of, even after Paul and I had a dozen kids, was the TV. That's the only thing. We didn't have any TV, but I was always scared, you know. But you did Yeah. In fact, the doctor told me one time I had TV because I had kidney trouble and didn't take x-rays or nothing. I went for the rest, I went for 30 years of, I wouldn't let the kids drink after me as I stole my dishes, thinking I had TV, and I didn't, but uh, you, you, you make house calls? Yeah. Oh yeah, they made house calls, and he'd come out there a couple of times and give me quinine, and that quinine didn't care my kidneys, and then they said I had TV. Mm -hmm. So I got up and went to Fort Smith on a vacation. Mm -hmm. I uh, took, I had, Lena was a baby, and I got up out of bed, and, but I got feeling better and I went to Fort Smith.